What's up folks, Little Rami here and welcome back to yet another video and today we're talking D-Load. So what is a D-Load and how do you use D-Load effectively in your training? Well, sometimes you feel like lifting is becoming harder and it's harder for you to push harder than last time. It's harder for you to even keep up with your pace that you're used to. You feel weaker, you feel tired, you feel fatigued. You feel like your joints cannot keep up with your weight. You feel like no matter what you do with your food, your training, your resting time, you're not really, it seems like you're not really getting enough rest that you need to actually push harder than last time or even keep the same pace or maintain the same pace that you're used to. I guess it's time now for a deal load. You know better than I do. Most bodybuilders are hung up on the fact that you need to go hard or go home, train harder than last time. You know, uh, no pain, no gain, which is all true statements, I'm not gonna lie. It's a good mentality to go by when it comes to bodybuilding, when it comes to fitness, because you, you wanna progress all the time. And progress doesn't come from nothing. It comes from pushing harder, uh, pushing your, your limits, and breaking freaking numbers, and just showing off, and like feeling great, feeling strong. But that's not the case sometimes. Because when it comes to progressing, two things happen. Progress and fatigue and both of them are not really gonna align together. Progress, we need that. You need progress in order to feel greater. You know, you get stronger, you get bigger. But fatigue is something that you don't want because with fatigue, you won't be able to push. So yes, working hard is something that you do really need, but also sometimes you need to work smart, not hard, to break the plateau. So you do need that small break in order for you to optimize your performance later on when you get back on track. So there are multiple ways to do uh, to do a deload. You know, it's mostly a deload week. It, sh it should be a week. I mean, it could be a, a little bit more. It all depends on how you feel when you're done with that week. So you could feel great after that first week and you just hammer back on perfectly fine. Some other people, including myself, when I push so damn hard in the off season, and then I start taking a deload phase or even a break from training, I feel like more than a week is something that I really need. Like for right now, I've been deloading for about a month and some change, you know, and it's been working great for me. My strength is actually going up and my performance is getting better than how it was before I take that deload phase. So it's working great for me right now. I'm not competing. I'm not really trying to achieve anything. I'm not trying to go for anything that requires so damn much hard work. So like I prefer staying on a deload phase. That way, when time comes for me to hammer back on, I'm good to go. So a deload week is a programmed phase of lowering your intensity or your volume at your training. Um, it allows your, your body to recover better more optimally in between those sessions. During a deload week, the weight that you lift, um, the reps that you do, the sets that you perform are decreased to give you, give your muscles, give your nervous system, give your joints, the break that it needs in order for it to recover and heal properly. So that's the main reason why we deload or that's the main reason why we actually take a break. So again, you know, when it comes to progressing, you know, in fitness in general, it comes with progress and fatigue. Progress is something that you truly need all the time, but then fatigue is something that you don't need because fatigue is what hinders you back from accomplishing what you need. So sometimes you need to hold back off a little, you know, from the intense training that you're doing in order to get rid of that fatigue, that thing that stumbles you, you know, from achieving what you're trying to achieve, you know, in order for you to get back on track and hammer it back on. The deload phase or when you take a break actually from the gym, like no lifting whatsoever, you're not even touching the bar. What happens is that your nervous system takes a break, your muscles take a break, your joints take a break, your entire body just takes a good healthy break for it to perform back on. What happens in your body is that when it comes to your internal organs, you know, you never see your organs, right? It all works optimally on its own way. It's something that if humans have no hands when it comes to like organs and stuff. It's working optimally 24 seven along the years that you're living, right? But then sometimes, you know, you get sick, you know, something in your kidney, something in your liver, something in your gut, heart, whatever the case may be. And that's due to stress that you put on that organ 
that allow that organ not to work optimally. And that's when you visit your doctor and your doctor does their blood work and everything and be like, oh, you got a problem there. You're putting too much stress on that. Oh, your lungs are bad. You're smoking too much. You got to quit that shit. You know, same thing with the body. Like when it comes to fitness and training, you know, when you put so much stress on your body, your nervous system gets tired. Your muscles get tired. Your joints get tired. You want to slow down for some time in order for it to recover and get back to a normal pace. So how do we deload effectively? We've got three ways of deloading. First way is actually taking a break, a full break. You're not even touching a bar, a dumbbell or a machine. You're just sitting home, resting, relaxing, eating properly. Make sure of that nutrition part, you know, research have shown that sitting home for a week is not going to affect your gains whatsoever, but also you want to keep your diet intact. You want to keep it in a good shape. That way, you know, when you don't feel sloppy, you're not going to get sloppy. It's just like a mental thing that comes in your head when you stay out of the gym. You know, you feel like, oh shit, I'm losing. You're not actually losing. A whole week is not going to do anything to you, but make sure that you're on point when it comes to your diet while that break that you're taking at home. Second way of deloading, which is, I would say like a tapering down deload. A tapering down deload is technically when volume is lower down, but intensity is still going on the same. So like, the amount of training that you do throughout your session, like the volume, like the sets and the freaking reps are low, but then the, inten the intensity, you're going all out. You're going to failure, even beyond failure, you know? And that's kind of a mental thing that you feel like, oh, I'm not actually deloading, I'm pushing hard, but you are lowering down or decreasing your sets and your reps, you know, in your session, that's what allows your body to recover better. And then you have the standard deload that most people know, which is basically cutting back on your training volume and intensity to 30 or 50%. That way you allow your body that you're still pushing blood to the muscles, still like actively training, but then at the same time, you're not putting that much stress on your body. It gives your body that chance to grow, as we said, and heal. So it's like dropping a set or two from each movement or each muscle group that you're training. So that way you allow your body to actually relax. All right. So how often should you do load? Well, it comes back to two things, or there are two ways of doing this. First one is proactively, which is you set a program for yourself that every four to six weeks, we're just going to deload for a week. You know, it's, it's a set program, you know, it's fixed. So, you know, like whatever three, four, five, six weeks, whatever you determine um, is where you're going to stop and pause for a week, whether you take a full break or you deload and then you get back on, or you can do reactively, which is intuitively you feel your body is getting tired, fatigued, and you're feeling that you're doing absolute shit at the gym and you're not feeling yourself right and that's when you tell yourself i gotta stop i gotta take a break i gotta slow down i gotta deload so you've got both ways of doing a deload it all goes back to your own preferences so figure out which way works best for you and that's what's gonna ultimately get you to the best results and that's it for today folks if you like the video please hit the like button you know share the video spread the knowledge best way in life is to actually help people get better and do better you know and uh you know, it makes you feel great. It makes me feel great. So yeah, um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And, and we'll see you guys on the next one.